Uh, and uh, no, but of course, as as my colleague Charlie Balte likes to point out, uh, we never we never actually admit to people that we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, so you 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 observe this kind of thing. You don't say we have no idea what's going on in the universe. No, you say we discovered dark energy. Big triumph. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so we have discovered dark energy. And furthermore, we know something about how much of it there is, namely uh, because we can actually measure this curve. And so you can ask, what is the density of the dark energy compared to matter? Now, uh, you know how to compare energy to matter, right? You have to use E equals mc squared. So uh, uh, if you have uh, energy, uh, some amount of energy per meter cubed, uh, you that can transform that into uh, energy over c squared per meter cubed. Uh, and that now is in the same units as, uh, a, as a matter density. Uh, and so you can have omega of the matter which we think is about a third or a quarter or something like that. Uh, and uh, you can ask how much energy is there. You can ask how much omega is there in energy, in this dark energy. Not photons, not ordinary kinds of energy, but, but this repulsive, mysterious repulsive dark energy. It's about three times the amount of matter. Uh, where omega, remember, is equal to density over the critical density. And you know, it doesn't matter whether it's an energy density divided by c squared or some, some amount of matter. OK. That's what we think the universe uh, consists of. So here is the famous pie chart of the universe, which tells you uh, what's going on. So you know how pie charts work. You start with a circle. That's everything. Uh, and here's us. Uh, so this is all ordinary matter and all ordinary kinds of energy, photons, what have you, that we know about. Uh, and it's something like 4% of the universe. Then there's a big chunk that's dark matter. And that we discussed last time. The dark matter is this uh, stuff we can't see. It might be wimps. It might be machos. We don't know. We can't see it. But uh, we know it's there. Why do we know it's there? Because it exerts gravitational force on galaxies and stars in galaxies. And we can measure how much of them there is by looking at, at stars, uh, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies and inferring the mass of them by, by observing the orbits of things around them, just as we did with black holes, just as we did with planets. This is a f fairly straightforward. Uh, astronomical technique. The rest of it, this region here, is dark energy. Which not only can we not detect directly, but it has a physical effect unlike anything else we know anything about at all. Namely, it pushes out. It's a, it's a purely repulsive force of some kind. Uh, and, uh, and it uh, uh, and that purely repulsive force provides three quarters of the mass energy of the universe. Well, that's bad, because uh, we have even less idea. Oh, and I should say, so we've been counting up frontiers and controversies with time. This is frontiers and controversies in 2007. What the heck is going on with this pie chart? What's this? What's this? And why? That's what we need to find out. Uh, now, oddly enough, it turns out Einstein predicted this. Einstein was a genius, only he then retracted it and decided it was the greatest mistake he had ever made. Uh, and then, it, uh, because he said it was a great mistake, everybody ignored it for 70 years until we discovered the dark energy. And then somebody said, oh, you know, Einstein told us about this already. Uh, and here's how, why he did it. Uh, remember, uh, Einstein. Uh, wanted uh, a static universe. This is, before, uh, this is before 
Hubble discovered that the universe was expanding. And so Einstein was looking at the implications of his equations of general relativity, and he thought it would be nice if the universe was static. And the problem is, there's all this matter in the universe, so it attracts itself. So it can't be static, because if, if you try and hold it in one place, it'll fall down. It has to either be expanding up or expanding down, just like the pen is either going up or going down. So, uh, but that's bad, thought Einstein, because it ought to be static. So he invented uh, an additional term for his equation, additional term, which he wrote down as a capital lambda and called the cosmological constant. And this had uh, generated a repulsive force that would balance gravity and lead to a static universe. And it was allowed in the equations. It fit fine into the equations. There was no problem there. Those of you who have done calculus, uh, this shows up as a constant of integration. So it can be any, any value you like. Um, if you don't know calculus, ignore that last sentence. Uh, OK. Uh, and so he invented this repulsive force, this cosmological constant, to balance gra uh, gravity so that you could have a static universe. Then Hubble discovers that the universe isn't static, discovers expansion. And Einstein says, damn, I could have predicted that. And then I would have been famous, you know? Uh, so Einstein says, uh, lambda was my biggest mistake. Because if he hadn't been so insistent that the universe needed to turn out to be static, he could have said, you know, my equations predict that the universe either has to be expanding or contracting. It has to be moving around. And then Hubble would have verified Einstein's prediction. And Einstein might have won the Nobel Prize or something. Uh, so lambda was my biggest mistake. Except it turns out that it might be true. Uh, so this is one of those fables, right? Uh, the fable of Einstein's. Uh, biggest uh, mistake. Uh, and the moral is interesting ideas uh, can turn up in a different context and turn out to be even more important than you thought they were and turn up in other contexts. So for 70 years, you know, the idea of this, this lambda term, this cosmological constant, was kind of buried in the textbooks. It would be, you know, problem 53 at the end of chapter 7. You know, supposing there is a cosmological constant, then what would happen? Uh, and, uh, uh, and generations of grad students, you know, thought about this for 15 minutes and then forgot. Uh, and then, all of a sudden, uh, it turns out to be uh, uh, an explanation for this very mysterious uh, 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 force. Now, this just because you stick it in an equation doesn't tell you what it is. So what might it be? The particle physicists, it turns out, have a little bit of an explanation for this called the vacuum energy. I'll talk more about that later, never mind what it is. I just wanted to point out that if you calculate what the vacuum energy is, what you discover is that omega associated with this lambda is equal to 10 to the 120. That's a particle physics calculation. Uh, the observed omega is equal to about 3 quarters. Okay, So this is the wrongest calculation in the history of science. Uh, it's off by 120 orders of magnitude. And in fact, it would be very bad if this was true, because if there was that much repulsive energy, no galaxies would have formed, no uh, planets would have formed. We wouldn't be here. We, all our stuff would have been sprayed out into the far reaches of the universe. Uh, so we knew already that that couldn't really be true. Uh, and so what the particle physicist said was, you know, obviously this can't be true. So it must somehow cancel out, so it must be zero. Uh, because otherwise we have this embarrassing problem, which we know can't be true. The fact that it, it's small but not zero is completely mysterious. Uh, and uh, that's where we'll start next time.